Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I'm using Topaz Mask AI. I'm showing you my Photoshop uh, workflow tutorial. You're going to learn a lot of interesting things in this tutorial, so stick with me to the very end. You're going to learn a lot. Um, so, hey, without any further ado, let's get started. I just want to start off by saying, by no means is this a great image. I just picked it because it's one of my images and it has a um, a pretty tough to replace sky in it. Okay, so I thought I really wanted to, you know, put uh, Mask AI to the paces and I've come up with some new tips and tricks and I really want to share these with everybody because I think this will really help you. Now, this is my workflow for working with uh, Mask AI replacing skies. I always like to work in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you my Photoshop uh, workflow here, okay? So the first thing I did was, well, I duplicated the background layer and I stuck it up here on the top of the stack right here. But let me shut that off. And then I went and got one of my skies to replace it with. And all I did here was I... Uh, I transformed the sky to make it fit my image. So that's Command or Control T. I'll show you how I did that. And then what I did was I just lowered my opacity so I could kind of see that sky showing through my image a little bit. And I just positioned it to where, see that water line right there was right below this part of the tree line right here. Okay, so I don't see any water shooting up through because I don't want to see water into my sky area, right? So I just used that to position it and then typed my return key, accepted that, went ahead and took my opacity, took it up the full way, and then I turned my background layer back on. And that sky will be in the perfect position once I get it out of Mask AI and bring it back into Photoshop. I'm really excited to show you a really cool little tip inside of Photoshop once Mask AI sends uh, my mask back into Photoshop. I'm going to show you something really interesting. So stick around and wait till the end of this video because you're going to be quite uh, excited about this little uh, trick I found in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select my background layer here because this is a layer I want to send into Mask AI. So I'm going to come up here to Filter and go to Topaz Labs and find Mask AI and we'll go ahead and get that launched. And then I'll show you what I do here in uh, Mask AI. And I'm trying to simplify my process here. And again, this is a super complicated mask, but you're going to see how easy this is to really get this masked out pretty quick. Now, first off, we have to make our tri map because remember, that's what Mask AI uses as a tri map. Uh, green meaning keep, red meaning cut, and blue for compute. Okay, so. Uh, Mask AI defaults with a blue compute brush here. Okay, now you could come here and you can click uh, auto detect subjects or auto detect sky. I'll just click auto detect sky right here. And it does a fairly decent job, but I'm just going to undo that. And I'm going to show you how I do it here. And this is, this is fast, okay? So what I'm going to do is make my brush a little smaller. I'm just using my left bracket key. And I'm just coming to the edge of wherever I see sky peeking through the tree line here. I'm just going to go like this and draw a selection around it like so. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back in and get the uh, blue bucket tool to fill everything in. But I'm just painting around the perimeter here like this. Okay. And then I'm going to get my blue paint bucket and just go click it and fill that in. Now I'm going to get my red bucket and click and fill that in. And now the next thing I do is I'm going to make sure I'm in the AI uh, mask mode because this is a complicated mask. If it was just a simple mask, I could click contrast, but it's complicated. So I'm going to click compute mask. And in a few seconds here, my mask will be computed and you'll see it here. Okay, it's almost there. So hang in there. This is real time. Okay, there it is. Now it's time to refine the mask. So what I like to do is work in this uh, show two windows view. So right now the tri map is on. I'm going to shut it off by clicking right here and shut it off. So I have something to compare the uh, masked out sky image with. Okay, so right now you see the gray and white square showing that's a transparent sky. But here's what I like to do. Go to background and click on color. And I'm going to try to find a color that's close to the sky I'll be replacing. So see right where it says uh, background color. Click on this drop down menu here and 
Find a color that's close to the sky color you want to replace, maybe a color something like that, and just click OK. It just gives you something to reference to, OK? And now what I'm going to do is zoom way in and take a look at the image, OK? I'm pressing down the space bar and my hand tool comes up, and I'm just looking around all my edges, OK? And you can see there's a little bit of fringing here, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not even going to use the edging tools in here. Okay, I'm trying to speed up this workflow, and this is my Photoshop workflow, remember. So everything looks good up here, and Mask AI just does a beautiful job cutting this out. It's pretty good. Let's look right in here. That's looking pretty good. I might have to do a little bit of refining right in here. But other than that, everything looks good. Um, I'm going to make sure I have my compute brush up, which I do right now. And if you don't, by the way, use your shortcut keys. Q for the uh, compute brush, W for the keep brush, and E for the erase brush. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And this area I purposefully missed right here. So I'm just going to give it a little paint right over there and let it uh, fix itself right up like so. Okay, good. And then the only other little area might have been right in here. I'm going to get my uh, keep brush. So that's W is the shortcut for that. Make my brush a little smaller. It missed a little bit of this branch right here. So let's fix that. And now it took this branch out. Sometimes that will happen. You get one, it'll it gets fooled and it thinks this one wants out too. But just like that, I think it's good. And it might have missed this little section right here. Let's see if it did. And maybe right here. Let's get that right there. And other than that, everything looks really good. Let me zoom back out. Again, I'm not using any of the edging tools here. I'm happy with that. Now all I need to do is click apply. Now there's something very important here. We added a background color, right? To help us to see how we were going to refine this mask, okay? So when I click apply... Um, it's going to give me this apply image as option up here. It's give me an option of transparent or composite. If I wouldn't have added that uh, background color there, it would have, when I clicked apply, it would have just sent me back into Photoshop with the layer mask intact. But now being that I've added that uh, background uh, color, I have to click transparent. So when I click transparent, uh, it's going to send me right back into Photoshop. And now you'll see uh, the layer mask applied inside of Photoshop. Now for my secret weapon. And this, this is something that's been added to Photoshop uh, recently. I don't know how many updates back, but if you have the uh, Photoshop 2020 in the Creative Cloud, you're definitely going to have this feature if you've been updating uh, Photoshop. Okay, so this is my little trick for defringing, okay? So I did not use any uh, of the edging tools inside of Mask AI. I wanted to save time and get in and out of Mask AI fast because it's a really quick program and I wanted to really speed up my... Uh, workflow here and this is my workflow working with Photoshop remember that okay uh, so I didn't use any of the uh, foreground recovery tools or the edging tools or anything like that so here's my secret make sure you're on the uh, pixel layer not on the mask okay like this but make sure you're on the pixel layer come up here to layer and come down to where it says matting and see right here where it says color decontaminate give that a click and watch your picture magically or your image magically gets corrected. Your fringing goes away. Now I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to take this control. This is a sticky slider, by the way. Once you've adjusted it, it's going to remember your adjustment. So in other words, it's going to get you always close in the ballpark. Okay, so right now mine's on 84%. I'm going to take the whole way to the left, which is 1%. And you notice my fringing comes back. So I'm just going to start to drag this slider up and the fringing just magically starts to go away. This is pretty much the same type of a tool that uh, Mask AI uses for their foreground recovery. It just uh, feels, the, it gets rid of fringing is what it does. And I, that number was 84 right there. And that is it right there. Now I can just drag around on my image here. I got my hand tool up here. So I'm just dragging around. You can see, look at the job it did. It did a beautiful job. It got rid of all my fringing. And you can click the preview and see the before and the after. And when you're happy with it, you just click OK. Now let's uh, zoom back out of the image right here. And let's option click the background layer. So here's my before and here is my after. So that's really cool. One of the reasons I really like to use uh, Photoshop as my... Uh, you know, to work out of because it, you know, Mask AI makes me this layer mask, okay? 
So when I option click the layer mask, you'll see here's my layer mask. So if I had any issues on my layer mask, I have more opportunity more opportunity to fix them inside of Photoshop because I can paint with white and black paint on my layer mask and fix problems if I missed a spot or whatever. So that's really cool. That's why I like to use this workflow because if I if I work out of uh, Mask AI, you know, once I've saved it, I can't come back and 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 fix it. Okay, so. I got to make sure I get it right in there, but that's why I like to work with Photoshop because if I mess up, I can fix it. Okay, so I'm going to option click the uh, mask layer and now I'm back to the image. Okay, so again, here's my before and here's my after. And Mask AI did a beautiful job and this is really quick and simple to do. What we've just done here by replacing the sky is called compositing. Now, whenever you do compositing, you need to have these two images work together. In other words, the image has to look like it belongs. Like this new sky has to look like it belongs to the foreground, okay? So what I would need to do is uh, I might have to adjust my sky independently of my foreground. And that's really easy to do. And if you recall when I was, uh, if you've seen some of my other videos using Mask AI, uh, the piece of software by itself, and I was swapping out the sky inside of the software. If you'll recall, I was using the foreground and the background adjustments to marry the two images together. But this is my workflow that I generally use all the time, and that's working out of Photoshop. So I'm not using that feature of Mask AI, but I'm going to show you how I do it here in Photoshop. So if I need to adjust my sky, simple. Just click on the sky layer. Uh, get any adjustment layer. Let's get a curves adjustment layer. And if I pull the curve up, you notice the sky gets lighter. If I pull the curve down, the sky gets darker. So I might need to balance this image out. And I might say, you know what? I want my sky just a little bit darker. So I'll pull down on the curve a little bit. And then I might say, you know what? I need a little less saturation than the sky. So then I could come get another adjustment layer. And now I'm going to get a hue saturation. Now I'm still above the sky layer but I'm below the original foreground layer here, okay? I know it says background copy, but it's actually the foreground that is uh, on this layer right here, okay? So now I'm getting a um, hue saturation. So now when I take the saturation and move it to the left, see, I can remove some saturation from the sky or give it more saturation, depending what we want. But say I just want to remove a little bit of that saturation to make it look believable, maybe right there, okay? Now, what if I want to work on the foreground, okay? So I'm going to click on this uh, background copy, which is actually my foreground. So I'm going to click on this. And now I'm going to get another adjustment layer. So say, for instance, I want to lighten my foreground up a little bit. So let's go to our adjustment layers and let's get a curves layer. And if I start to pull up in this curve, watch what happens. The whole image gets lighter, right? And that's not what I want or the whole image gets darker. I just want to affect the uh, foreground. So let me just drag this off. Okay, so now my curve is set back to default. This is very important. You see this little icon right here? If I click this, this is called a clipping layer. And if I click this, see this little uh, clipping icon right here? That means that this adjustment is only going to work, affect the layer directly below it. So now watch. When I pull up in this curve, it's only going to affect the foreground. Is that pretty cool, right? But you'll notice it's only affecting that, that one layer. So now I might say, you know what? I need to change the color balance of this a little bit. So now I can come get another adjustment layer. And this time, let's get a color balance and uh, make sure we clip it. So it's all these adjustment layers will have this little icon right here. So just click on that. And now it's only going to affect the pixel layer directly below it. So now I might say I could either maybe cool that foreground down a little bit like so just to match it up maybe just maybe slightly cool it just a little bit like that and uh and voila i just i just altered the color balance but only on the foreground so that's very important whenever you're compositing images you need to marry them together but i really like to do this all inside of photoshop this is just my preferred way of working and i wanted to really share it with you today well, this is my workflow tutorial for using Topaz Mask AI. This is the way I like to use it, okay? So I think it gives you a lot more flexibility and better ways of adjusting and things like that. So I really wanted to share that with you today. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. 
I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.